Good morning, church. Let us all stand in Troyes. Jesus Christ. Our confidence is in the Holy Spirit. The Lord reigns. Our God reigns. Amen. Amen. The hymn, it passeth knowledge. VIP in voices in praise, sorry. 253. It passes knowledge that the devil of thine, my Savior Jesus, yet this soul of mine.
face to face I see, when at his lofty throne I bow the knee. Then of his love in all its breadth and length, its height and depth and everlasting strength, my soul shall say, praise God. We'll do the prayer of purity. Please be seated. At this time, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desired and known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name. To Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is, hear, O, e hear, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Let us in silence confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness. Almighty God, we have sinned against you and against each other in thoughts, in word, and in deed, in the evil we have done, in the good we have not done to ignorance, to weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sin for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us to forgive us, us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners. Hear then the good news. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Please stand for the glory. Let us glory in the assurance of our pardon. Glory be to God on high and on earth goodwill to all. We, we worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory, O Lord. Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Who take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You who take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You who take away the sin of the world, we receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. Amen. At this time, we'll do the responsive reading. It's taken from Psalms chapter 119. 137 to 144. You are righteous, O Lord, and your judgment are right. My zeal consume me because of my foe. Forget your word. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your love is the truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, 
but your commandments are my delight. That I may live. Glory be to God and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, no one ever shall be. I will tell them. Amen. At this time, we'll have a praise and worship team. Come forth. Bow down and worship.
mind. This is my desire.
We should have thank you. We are into the harvest season. Little is much when God is in it. Whatever you can do for God, <coughs> help us not to worry and to stress, Lord. God, for you are in the little things as well as the big what things. In the harvest field, the right hand, there's a word for all to do. At the voice of God is calling to the harvest, calling you. Little is much when God is in it. Live or not for wealth of faith. team for so ably leading us and we now have the welcome and notices from the student duty a pleasant good morning to everyone it's this time at this time that we give a welcome greetings to all and I'd like to start by welcoming our 
preacher for today, Reverend Joyce Rohan. Um, we always look forward to the first Sunday in each month to welcome her to the pulpit. Reverend Rohan, again, we extend our heartiest, con um, heartiest welcome to you today as you lead us in worship and also to Mr. Where did he go? Okay. Brother Henry, Brother Everton. Okay, great. Welcome also to any first time visitors with us. Um, if there are any first time visitors, I would like to ask you to stand and be recognized. Any first time visitors? Thank you. Just tell us um, who you are and where you are from, where you normally worship, and we are so happy to have you here. Okay, wonderful. Can we give her and her family the or long look welcome? Following in our bulletin, for those who have one, at the close of service today, we'll be led by class number four, our welcome service next Sunday, a worship service next Sunday, the 10th of November at 10 a.m. Our preacher will be Brother Angel Smith, and the readers will be Sister Perlin Leonard and Sister Colin Letson. I want to say thanks to all who participated in the service this morning. Again, Reverend Rohan, um, Brother Everton Henry, to the ushers, um, Sister Alice in the back, Alice Potter, uh, Senior Choir, uh, Musical Team, Brother Green, Brother Penn, uh, Drummer, Young Drummer, and everyone who's participating and all who are here today for making the service what it will be. Our notices today, the Harvest Thanksgiving services, um, today, November 3rd, will be not sung at 3. And um, next Sunday, Zion Hill, of course, long look, we will be on November 24th at 3 p.m., so we look forward to that. From the children's ministry calendar, on the 7th of November, the Children's Education Executive Committee at 5.30 p.m., it doesn't say where. On the 10th is Remembrance Day, Caribbean Conference of Churches Lord's Day on the 10th of November, on the 17th, or MCCA Youth and Young Adults Lord's Day. And on the 25th of November, we'll have this Light the Tree Advent Storytelling and Fellowship Meal. On the 25th, a soft collection will be collected. Uh, as we go along, you'll hear more about these events because the calendar doesn't say where and what time. This month is World Diabetes Day, and there will be, this November, there will be a number of activities. First, we have the Blue Day on the 14th, and that is to bring about, help bring about awareness. There will be a walk at 3.30 p.m. from the Sunday morning well to the Queen Elizabeth Park. On the 9th, there will be a gala dinner at Maria's by the Sea. 
and it's a fundraiser as well as a recognition <coughs> event. And they will be recognizing Mr. Bennett Smith from this area, from East End, and um, Tatika Scatliff, no, Scatliff, and Mr. Alan Reimer. They will be recognized for their service to this community, the BVI. On the 16th of November, it's a fun day activity in collaboration with the Rotary Club of Tortola. In Virgin God, it's with the Lions Club, but here in Tortola, it's with the Rotary Club. And on the 23rd of November, this month, there will be a health fair at One Mad Supermarket Grounds. So please go and have yourselves checked. Now, last month, we celebrated, we celebrated and concentrated on cancer and all the ramifications of that disease. But this month, we are zeroing in on diabetes and how costly that particular illness can be. It's very destructive. The cost, for one thing, it's, it's prevalent in the Caribbean and especially here in the BVI. It's debilitating to those persons who have it and are not able to control it. You have um, loss of limbs, um, persons are on dialysis. I understand we have a lot of deaths from diabetes, so please be very mindful of diabetes and what it has done and can do. And so please um, go out to these events so that you can get all the information you need not to get it, first of all, and if you do have it, it runs in families in Tortola and to try to contain it or control it. I don't know if there's anything else that uh, good nurse Alice Pickering would like to add, <laughs> but she says no. But um, please, this is Diabetes um, Day and, um, in November, and we're asking you to please um, become aware and get educated about this very prevalent and debilitating disease. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. To talk a little more about the BVI Circuit Youth Commission, the Youth and Young Adult Retreat. And I remember I was at the youth meeting uh, one, two Friday nights ago and we were talking a lot about this activity and I hope that there are some young people from the Longlook congregation that will attend. It's from Friday 15th of November to Sunday the 17th. The assembly at 5.30 p.m. A bus will take each participant to the retreat site and the venue is at Isis Villas in Bruce Bay. Very nice place. You will enjoy. The cost is $300. Uh, Friday, 15, 7 p.m., it says to 10 p.m. I'm not sure if that is correct, and that's some activity. Um, I'm not sure if that should be, yeah, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday, like the activity. The Saturday activities will range from 9.30 in the morning to 9.30 in the evening, and Sunday from 8.45 to 3 p.m. The program components, and this is all in your bulletin if I'm reading a little too fast. Growing deeper in Christ, a daily encounter with Christ through prayer and contemplation activity. Fulfilling my Christian vocation, living out my faith in today's church and beyond. And what's next? Meals, of course, will be provided, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And again, the costs will be $300. Okay, those seem to be the notices. Let us remember always to pray for any bereaved families and all the sick and shut in members of the church and in this community. And we have had some bereaved families over the weeks. There were quite a few on the radio this past week. And um, we again extend our condolences to the Potter and the Crab families who laid their loved one to rest yesterday, and Selma Potter. He was a member of the Church of God, our neighbor church just across the road. The church in training is listed in a bulletin. Mm. 
And at this time, I want to offer congratulations and best wishes to all birthday celebrants and anniversary celebrants. And if there are any, I would like to ask you please to come forward so that we may congratulate you and you may have a blessing from the church. Birthday celebrants, anniversary celebrants, please come. Sister Jackie, birthday. Your birthday, Rev, or your anniversary? Birthday. birthday. Wow. Happy birthday, a special one. I want to ask all members to stand as we pray for these three ladies and especially for Reverend Ronan. It's on Tuesday. It's on Tuesday, she said. <laughs> Tuesday, not Tuesday. So let us, I will hold hands and so that many prayers will go up this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and bringing us here, Lord, to worship. And Lord, I bring before you this morning these three lovely sisters and ask you, Lord, to bless them. Be with them, Lord. Continue to bless them and continue to guide them, Lord, as they walk in your vineyard. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask for health, continued health and strength from them as they continue to work in the church, outside of the church. We particularly ask a special blessing on all of them but especially in Reverend Rohan. <coughs> Lord, bless them all. Bless their families who support them, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to continue to be with them as they do your work. We ask this in a very special way. We ask, Lord, and I ask the congregation to say a big Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Thank you. 
So we continue uh, our notices, welcome and offering at this point. Now we will accept the offering, it will be taken and um, for um, probably at the end we will have one for the bus fund or the building fund. One of the, at this point the offering will be taken. Please um, give generously. Thank you. Father, again, we come before you with thanksgiving, Lord. Lord, thanking you for your mercies and thanking you for sparing our lives, thanking you for health and strength, Lord, to work and provide for ourselves and our families. We thank you, Lord, that you have been able to provide us with the finances to meet our needs in our private lives, but also in the church. Lord, we ask you to take this offering, Lord, accept it and bless it and so that we may, it may be used in your kingdom to further your work here on earth. This we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. donation to the church. You may be seated for a while. When you speak, you have to 
speak at the right time, don't you? In the right place, so that the right person can hear you. I didn't know that he was listening when I said, I need a lectern for Bible study. I have to make my own lectern with a stool and some books. So I said it and Brother Henry heard. And I said, I want it next week. <laughs> and next week it was there. So we give thanks to God, to you, because you were listening, OK? You don't just listen and do nothing. You listened attentively, and then you have made this beautiful, he says it's not the best that he can do, but it's beautiful. And in the eyes of God, it is wonderful. A gift to God's church for God's work. Could be used for Bible study, it could be used for meetings, whatever. When people, some people like me like to stand when I'm doing Bible study or whatever. Or you have a meeting, so that will come in very, very handy. So we thank God for you, and thank God that you were able to make this gift, this presentation this morning to his church. And we pray that it will be used to God's honor and to God's glory in everything that we do. So on behalf of the church, thank you. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go to you. Heavenly Father, we accept this gift given on your behalf the things of God for the people of God we accept with thankful hearts we pray that you will bless the one who has given it for the church you will multiply his blessings you will multiply our blessings so that we will always have to give into your service and to your work in Jesus name we pray Amen. Okay. Thank you. There's one more thing I'd like to, um, to lift up now before God. You know, very often in the church, we, we throw out the, the baby with the bath water. I don't know if any of you <coughs> realize or you have heard of the, the, the services that used to be held a long time ago called um, for all saints and all souls. Yeah. Ever had that in the church? Yes. So every year during all saints or all saints, whatever you call it, the church would remember all those who died during the year. And they would have a special service and call the names of the members who passed on during the year. It's usually the first week of November, the first and second of the month of November every year. So I want us now to remember those of our fellowship who have passed on. And I want all of us here this morning to remember those of our families who have passed on, not necessarily during the year, but who have passed on over the years. And, and we, we miss them, and we miss their fellowship. We miss what they have been to us and to God's church. Let us stand and just pause and remember them. Remember your parents, your grandparents all those in your family, and especially those who belong to the church, especially those who love the Lord. Let us remember them at this time. Thank you, God, for their witness 
and their service. Amen. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. And all the congregation says, Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank you. And now we'll have the, the ministry, ministry in song by our senior choir. Solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, choir. That's when you wear a lot of hats, right? And here and there at the same time. <clears throat> we continue with the ministry of the word. The first reading is taken from Second Thessalonians chapter one. The Old Testament is taken from Habakkuk, chapter 1, from 1 to 4, and from 2, chapter 2, 1 to 14. S 
And the New Testament is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, from 1 to 4, and from 11 to 12. The Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 19, from 1 to 10. May the readers come forth, please. Morning, church. Morning. Reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. It's taken from chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and then verses 2, 1 to 14. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, and it's captioned the prophet's complaint. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. Chapter 2, God's reply to the prophet's complaint. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. Moreover, wealth is treacherous. The arrogant do not endure. They open their throats wide as shield, like death. They never have enough. They gather all nations for themselves and collect all peoples as their own. Shall not everyone taunt us, taunt such people, and with mocking riddles say about them, Alas, for you heap up what is not your own. How long will you load yourselves with goods, with goods taken in pledge? Will not your own creditors suddenly rise, and those who make tremble wake up? Then you will be booty for them, because you have plundered many nations. All that survive of the peoples shall plunder you because of human bloodshed and violence on the earth to cities and all who live in them. Alas, for you who get evil gain for your houses, setting your nest on high to be safe from the reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house by cutting off many peoples. You have forfeited your life the very stones will cry out from the wall, and the plaster will respond to the woodwork. Alas, for you who build a tongue by bloodshed and found a city on iniquity, is it not from the Lord of hosts that peoples labor only to feed the flames, and nations weary themselves for nothing? But the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Praise God. The second reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 to 4 and 11 and 12. Here begin it. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God, O Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God, O Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are about to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you, all toward each other aboundeth. So that we ourselves 
glory in you in the churches of God. For your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He ended the scripture reading. Our gospel reading comes to us from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of Christ. Christ Please be seated and we will sing the next hymn. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky.
Let the words of my mouth and let the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. You who are our strength, our fortress, and our redeemer. Amen. In this gospel reading, Luke 19, 1 to 10, we come up against a familiar story. One that we have been accustomed to hearing from Sunday school days. We know it so well that we used to sing a little song about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a very little man. He climbed up. He wanted to see. He wanted to see. And as the Savior, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Now, Zacchaeus, you come down out of your house for tea. Coming to your house for tea. Yes, that is what we remember about Zacchaeus, this little man who climbed up a tree and ended up with Jesus in his home. Now, the, the word, the name Zacchaeus means righteous one. That's what his name, his name means, Zacchaeus, righteous one. And we all remember that he was a, a tax collector. He was not only a tax collector, but he was the chief, chief tax collector. Chief tax collector. His job was to go around and to collect the various taxes that the, the Roman government you know, had put on the people. We all know the history very well that the Jewish people were an occupied people. They lived in their land but they were ruled by the who? Who ruled them? The Romans, yes. They were ruled by, with a heavy hand by the Romans. And sometimes the, the Romans would use their own people against them. And so they needed tax collectors to go around to collect all the taxes they levied on the people. Income taxes, custom taxes, like a toll. People had to pay a toll for passing through the city, coming from the countryside, even to come to the temple to worship God. They would have to pay taxes, tax heavily by the Romans. Taxation for the number of wheels that they had on their carts. Some of them came in, in, in carts, right? With wheels. So depends on the number of wheels you had. You had to be taxed, paid some money. You had to be taxed on the number of animals that you were bringing in. You had to be taxed on whatever was in your bag. So don't think you could get away with anything. The Romans were very strict with the people that they ruled. So as you can imagine, what kind of people were tax collectors in those days? Eh? What? Crude? Yes, that too, yes. But I was thinking of rich. Yeah, that's one too. Yes, they were, yes, they were rich. They were crude, as you say. You know, as we say, they had no style. Come for me money. Come for the government money. You better pay up. You better pay up. Yes. And so they became very, very rich. We would say they became, they were filthy rich. Anybody would like to be filthy rich? No, not at all. And because they were so rich, 
and they went about with an air. They were hated. Tax collectors in the days of Jesus, they were the most hated people on earth because they oppressed their own people. Back then, tax collectors did not receive a salary per se for the work that they did, okay? How did they make their living? Yes, by charging the people, collecting money from the people to pay to the Roman government. But then what would they do? They would charge more than was required. They would charge extra. If they had to pay Rome 5%, then they would make sure that they charge the people a 10% and they would pocket the rest. That is why they got rich. And that's why they were so hated by the people. Do you think the people had a reason to hate them? Of course they did, yes. Yes, so they collected for the Roman government and they put on extra that they would pocket themselves. So because they were Jews, these tax collectors were not Romans, you know, they were Jews. And the people saw them as traitors, saw them as thieves. And the fact that Zacchaeus was chief tax collector made it even worse. <laughs> when you're chief, what do you do? <laughs> yeah? You do what? Pass on the rules, yes. You must obey or so on. Because he was the chief, he supervised the others. He supervised the other tax collectors. And they all had to pay him a piece of the action. They all, the poor people, had to pay him a piece of the action. So he was a hated man. There was even a, um, a teaching in, in Jewish circles saying that when, if you associated with a tax collector, you were unclean. You were unclean if you associated with uh, tax collectors. And so, that's how he lived. So on this day in particular that we read in the, of in the gospel, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Remember that Jesus is beginning his journey to the cross. And he passes through <coughs> this town of Jericho. And there was a great crowd of people. And people, their hope was that they would be able to see Jesus. Everybody wants to see Jesus when he's coming to town. They wanted to see Jesus. They heard, they had heard about his fame. And perhaps Zacchaeus too, we know, found himself in Jericho. As part of this crowd, as a, in a sense, he could see the people, he could hear them shouting and, and calling out to Jesus. He realized, yes, Jesus was the Messiah. Perhaps Zacchaeus had heard of Jesus befriending another tax collector. You remember who that was? Matthew? Matthew was a, a tax collector that Jesus approached and told him to come follow me. So in his situation, Zacchaeus must have thought that it would be good if he could get into contact with Jesus. Zacchaeus was so hated that he felt that he could use a friend. He felt 
that he could use a friend. Can you imagine what it's like to be hated by everyone? No one wants to see you. No one wants to talk to you. That was his position. So everybody shouting. Zacchaeus realizes that he has a problem. The crowd was too great. He was so short. He was so short. And he wanted to see Jesus. The people were so tall above him. And you know, sometimes as parents or as older siblings, we are somewhere and we would want our children to see what's happening above the crowd. What, what do we do? Put them on our shoulders. No one would do that. Who would put Zacchaeus on their shoulders? Lord, he was an outcast. He was a thief. <laughs> they didn't want to get close to Zacchaeus. So he could not, he would never find anyone willing to allow him to ride on their shoulders so that he too could see Jesus. Thankfully, sycamore trees were nearby. And we are told that these trees had short trunks and wide branches, and they were very easy to climb. So that was the perfect tree. And so Zacchaeus climbed this sycamore tree. And look at what Jesus does. All eyes are on Jesus as he walks towards the sycamore tree. And as he gets under the sycamore tree, he stops. And he looks up. He stops and he looks up. Jesus, as it were, was peering into the soul of this man, Zacchaeus. It is as if he were on that road that day, especially for Zacchaeus. Jesus, it seemed, knew everything about Zacchaeus. Jesus knew everything about the money that he'd stolen. Jesus knew about his suffering because of it and how the people mistreated him and, and hated him. And the heart of Jesus was moved with compassion. towards this friendless and this lonely man. This friendless and lonely man, the heart of Jesus was moved with compassion. That was a trait of Jesus. He always felt sorry for people who were suffering, who were hungry, who were downtrodden, even though it was because of their sin. Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I want to stay at your house today. I want to stay at your house today. Zacchaeus had gotten up that tree just so that he could see Jesus like the other people wanted to see Jesus. But he soon realized that Jesus had come looking for him. Jesus had come looking for him. 
specially for him. Brothers and sisters, how amazing grace is. How amazing is the grace of God. There is no, this is just, a, this is a quote from Corrie Ten Boom. She wrote in one of her books, there is no pit so deep that the love of Christ is not deeper still. That's what she said in her struggles. And when she realized what God had done in her life, she says, there is no pit so deep that the love of Christ is not deeper still. In other words, there's no way that you can go, that you can be far from the love of God or from the grace of God. His love, his grace will reach you wherever you are. What does the psalm say? If I go into the heavens, if I go down to deep, the deep bottoms of, the, of hell, you are there, no matter where. We are. God knows and God can find us. You see, the mission of Jesus Christ is always to look for lost sinners. Remember in Genesis 13 and verse 9, God asked, Adam, where are you? God didn't know where Adam was? Come on. <laughs> Adam, where are you? And God did it when God tries to, to find us. When he wants to let us know that he is in, going in search of us, he's not like a policeman looking for a criminal, but he's searching as the heart of a father looking for a lost child. So Jesus is here doing the same thing. Same thing. Zacchaeus thought that he was looking for Jesus, but Jesus was actually looking for Zacchaeus. Indeed, it is not that we love God, but that God loves us. Notice Jesus does not say, Zacchaeus, what are you doing? That's the first thing we would say. Zacchaeus, what are you doing? You look like a fool. Come down, you scoundrel. How dare you treat people like that? Look at you. You probably have stolen money right now in your pocket. Why don't you throw that down here and go to the synagogue and pray and ask the priest to forgive you. Go to the synagogue and then come and see me. I need to talk to you about your finances. No accusation, no blame going on here with Jesus and with this man who was downtrodden and hated this thief, this scoundrel. Jesus just calls his name. Jesus also knows our names, you know that. Yeah. Even before our parents gave us names, Jesus knew what our names would be. He knew this man's name. And Jesus is calling us by name right now, where we are, seated in this building. And he says to us, stop hiding. He says to us, stop pretending. I know you by name and nature. I know what hurts you, what ails you. 
I know your problems. And I have come to deliver you. I have come to redeem you. Some of us here this morning, we need to be rescued. We need to be set free. Just like Zacchaeus needed to be rescued from himself, from the people. Jesus is here. And he's calling Yoni and inviting you to come and have sweet fellowship with him. Jesus sees you in whatever tree you're on now. Wh whichever tree, Jesus is seeing you right now. In whatever tree you might be in today. Because you have a need. There is that need. And you need to respond quickly and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't wait to clean up your act. It might be too late. You don't need to clean up first. You see, we cannot earn grace. So let's come down from that tree right now because Jesus is calling us. Can you hear him? Yeah. Calling your name. Come down. He wants to be in company with you right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, let's just sing um, Sinners Jesus will receive Just one verse and the chorus Sinners Jesus will receive Some this word of grace to all Who the heavenly pathway all who linger, all who fall, sing it all and all. Sing it all over again. Christ received, left sinful man. Make the man such clear and plain. Christ received, left Men, let us bow our heads and pray in our hearts. As we get ready to receive the Lord himself in this sacrament. Let us also give ourselves to him anew, afresh, in his service. And the altar is here. It's always here so that we can come to find Jesus. This is where you may need to come this morning. As Zacchaeus climbed that sycamore tree, this may be the tree where you need to come and to meet Jesus. Come quickly. Jesus is here. At any point in the service, please feel free to come and meet Jesus. Let us sing, believe not those who say the upward path is smooth, lest thou should stumble in the way 
and faint before the truth. It is the only road unto the realms of joy. But he who seeks that blessed abode must all his powers employ. Let's remain seated, please, as we sing. If you need to come to the altar, please do so as we sing. a sinner what matter who should whisper blame or who should scorn or slight if but thy God approve and if within thy breast thou feel the comfort of his love the earnest of his rest. Zacchaeus chose the better part. So he was able to have fellowship with Jesus. So can we this morning. If you're offering your gift upon the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has a grievance against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share the peace, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ with others.
Amen. Offering for the needy will be taken later on at the end of the communion service. Also, at the end of the service, we'll invite all the children and young people to come forward for a special prayer and blessing. Let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a good and pleasant thing, joyful and solitary, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Lord God, ever-living, ever-blessed, almighty, all-loving. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, you created all things and made us in your image. And when we had fallen into sin, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. You raised him up from the dead and you exalted him to the glory of your right hand where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us. In witness of his glory and honor, you poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body 
making us living members of your holy church and enabling us to stand before you to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty acts. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, in obedience to his command, we do this in remembrance of him, praying that you will accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Jesus Christ and become united with him. And as we offer ourselves to you, as a living sacrifice, we pray that you will bring us with your whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body because we share the one loaf and partake of the same drink. Please be seated and let us pray. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. You who truly and sincerely repent of your sins, you who are in love and charity with your neighbors, and you who have resolved to lead a new life following the commandments of God and by the power of the Spirit walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Receive his blood, which was shed for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. 
The table is prepared and you are invited.
the God of peace go with you and remain with you all this day and even forevermore. Amen.
what happened to Zacchaeus. He didn't care. All he cared about was that Jesus loved him. Jesus accepted him. No matter what the crowd was saying down below. He came up that tree right away. And went to his home with Jesus. We can do the same today. So we thank you Lord that you have fed us in this sacrament united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Let's invite our children, young people, please, for a special prayer at this time.
<laughs> his hand is up to me. He was busy this morning, yeah. having a good time, doing what children should be doing. Right? Enjoying himself in the house, the Lord in his own way. So we don't chase them, we welcome them, we embrace them. Don't we, church? Yes. We embrace our children, and we're happy to see quite a few here this morning. So let us pray a special blessing upon them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your presence with us today at this hour of worship. We felt that indeed we have worshipped, we've come into contact with you, and so we can go out in the world and share you with others, because we have you in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we bring this part of the church to you. Not the church of tomorrow, but part of the church right now. Yes. Our children, our young people. Mm -hmm. And oh God, we ask you to take control of them. Yes. Lord, you know and you see the world in which they live, the distractions, all the opportunities that come their way, all the different choices that they have as they go along lives. We pray for them as they grow, that you will help them to be able to make the right choices in life and to be your soldiers and your servants until the end of their days. So bless them all who are at this altar in a very, very special way. Let them feel your hands upon them, blessing them. Suffer the children to come unto me and forbid them not because they belong to me. Lord, we pray for them. Claim them today and claim them always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So God bless each and every one of you. Bless you. God bless you, big man. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. High five. Hey. Bless you. High five. God bless you. successfully from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, watch the hills and the tunnels never falter, never fail. How can we do that? Keeping our hands upon the throttle and our eyes upon the grave. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in that land forevermore. So let us sing to the glory of God.
Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.